So in this talk, we present a miniature the sensor platform for monarch butterfly migration tracking. So each fall, the millions of monarch butterflies across northern US and Canada migrate up to 4,000 kilometers to overwinter in central Mexico. However, the number of monarchs that migrate to central Mexico had dramatically declined in the past decade. So tremendous resources has been invested for the monarch conservation. In this effort, uh, we are developing a miniature the monarch butterfly migration platform called MCL. So there are uh, two important requirements for this monarch tracker. The first, it needed to localize the monarch butterfly at least once a day uh, during entire migration period, which is the between two or three months. And also not to interfere the monarch butterfly, the flight, it needed to be in a tangible milligram and also it needed to be uh, a few uh, millimeter scale in size. So in market, there are existing uh, tracking solutions for small birds and insects, as you can see in this slide. However, they are uh, too large or too heavy for monarch butterfly and or they have other issues uh, to achieve our goal. Thus, we propose a new a miniature Monaco butterfly the tracking uh, platform called MSAIL. Now I'm gonna introduce our long-term and overarching goal, which is not completed yet. First, uh, we will attach miniature MSAIL node to own the monarchs across Northern US and Canada. Then as the butterfly migrate to the central Mexico, the MCL on monarch butterfly will record light intensity and temperature during the entire migration period. And as uh, the butterfly reach the overwintering site, our pre-installed gateway will retrieve data from the MCL. This is the possible because the overwintering butterfly distribute unlimited number of sites. And then from the recorded data, we will construct the entire butterfly trajectory using deep neural network based sensor fusion localization algorithm. So in this talk, we focus on the miniature, the AMSOL node and the communication with our gateway. So these the right pictures shows the, our proposed the AMSOL node. It is wireless sensing system based on custom designed integrity circuits and it is an energy harvesting 62 milligram embedded system with eight by eight by three millimeter form factor, including the PCB antenna. This left bottom blue box lists the four important the techniques we applied for this system development, which we will discuss next. So for our system weight and size miniaturization, using, uh, instead of using a large single chip, um, as you can see in this the left figure and this the picture, we stack the small dice of uh, custom integrated circuit layers with 100 micrometer thickness and custom the chip scale batteries. We designed eight by eight, the this PCB antenna with a large opening in the center for the system size reduction and also weight. And uh, for the volume reduction, we applied the minimally the encapsulating epoxy around the integrated uh, circuits for uh, physical protection and also the light blockage. The bottom picture shows the here, the complete the M cell node attached on the monarch butterfly. Highly constrained the form factor limits our battery size and thus the battery capacity only uh, to 18 microamp hour. For energy autonomous operation with this tiny battery, we employ the three different operation modes, such as sleep, active sensing, and wireless communication. By maximizing the sleep time, we achieved the average power consumption of 784 nanowatt. The M cell periodically check the temperature and adjust each switching frequency of the power converter. So uh, this is for the changing the load current at different temperature. And it achieves power conversion efficiency improvement by 2.4 uh, times. 
Also, we MCEL includes the energy harvester uh, with eight custom uh, photovoltaic cells connected in series. So, and it does not uh, have any switching operation, so it uh, can achieve high efficiency and directly charge the integrated battery. Compared with the uh, state of the art, the fully integrated energy harvester, it achieves higher harvesting efficiency. We tested uh, this M cell uh, by placing uh, it to next to the window under the natural the light. And this um, graph shows the light intensity uh, in orange and the battery voltage uh, in blue, the measured by M cell for one week period. As you can see, the blue line, the battery voltage repeatedly are char are charged to 4.25 volt, which demonstrates the energy autonomous operation under a natural light. This, uh, we also tested our M cell in more aggressive uh, temperature, uh, like uh, the range, which is minus five and 60 degree in C. We control it using our temperature chamber. We also added a five kilolocks, the light source, and then turned on 12 hours per day, which is weaker light condition compared with our target outdoor light environment. So as you, uh, this graph shows measured temperature and battery voltage again uh, by M cell for one week period. And as you can see, this uh, blue line uh, shows repeatedly uh, charging the behavior, which also demonstrating the energy autonomous operation. The, the highly constrained form factor, form factor also limits the memory space uh, up to uh, 16 kilobytes for data storage. However, our uh, algorithm, the localization algorithm uh, requires the one minute uh, sensor sensing interval for light intensity and 32 minutes for temperature to, um, the sensor. And there are 48 and 24 bits sensor output requires 772 kilobyte memory space to cover the three months, the migration period. So it doesn't fit to the, our uh, M cell 16 kilobyte memory. So we applied four different techniques. First, we measure light intensity on uh, every minute only for three hours around the sunrise on sunset times. And also when we store this data to the memory, we gradually increase sampling intervals from sunrise, sunset to the center of the day. And third, so we also convert our integer, the raw integer sensor output to the log two representation and the results the memory space and save the memory on space. Lastly, we measure, we only store the difference from the previous measurement. So, and we achieved a required memory space of 7.2 kilobytes which will fit to our 16 kilobytes of memory available in our M cell. We applied this proposed compression technique uh, to our target localization algorithm and then compared with original uncompressed data. But since we don't have the M cell uh, the data a lot now, so we, uh, you, we collected the data from our uh, about 100 volunteers uh, from across the uh, Northern, like across the US and also Mexico and uh, Canada. And they uh, use the centimeter scale commercial sensor and then collect the data. Based on the data we um, run our algorithm for, uh, so this is the proposed compression technique and also the uncompressed data. And this graph shows the measured, um, the estimation error and the result shows the negligible difference between two of uh, these like, uh, approach. For wireless communication, we have two major uh, challenges, the first, the millimeter scale uh, the battery has high internal resistance. So it allows only 60 microamp peak battery current, even for RF uh, transmission. So we uh, address this challenge by using custom sparks, pulse position modulation using energy buffer. It enabled us to achieve non-line of sight transmission of 150 meters. So this diagram shows the, the sparks uh, PPM. This RF transceiver takes energy from here, the trickle charged energy buffer capacitor, and this capacitor is continuously charged by this battery through this current meter. And when there is the energy, uh, available energy in the environment, this uh, energy harvester with uh, this uh, photovoltaic cell, we charge this battery. As you can see here, the charging time is much longer than actual the, uh, the pulse duration. So the transmitter signal appear sparks in time domain. 
So another challenge is uh, the miniature, miniaturized M cell does not include RF reference crystal and PLL for the system size, weight, and power reduction. It sacrificed frequency stability of RF signal. So we address this challenge by proposing a new 2D FFT-based CFO, the carrier frequency offset and SFO, sampling frequency offset, joint estimation algorithm. We implemented on, uh, this algorithm on the USRP X310 compatible custom gateway for real-time RF communication. This uh, diagram uh, shows the DSP data pass implemented uh, on our gateways FPGA. The preamble from uh, MCL always start with uh, RF pulse train with a constant pulse interval. So uh, we propose a new FFT based this preamble processing that identifies CFO and SFO at the same time. First, the 2D FFT is performed on each signal frame. Then the output becomes the FF, a CFO hypothesis. And second, we apply another FFT to the outcome of the, this, the first FFT. Then the output uh, corresponds to a specific SF fundamental frequency. So this uh, plot shows like exemplary results from the proposed 2D FFT, the preamble processing. And by finding the maximum power, as you can see here, the gateway identifies CFO and SFO at the same time. We evaluated our wireless transmission at two different conditions. First, at an obstacled area. The second, at heavily wooden area. This left figure the shows result from the first uh, the condition and, result, and then achieved a line of sight transmission up to about 500 meter. And right picture shows our uh, the second condition setup and also the result of non-line of sight transmission up to 150 meter. So based on these results, we expect we can, uh, we can uh, our gateway can um, deal with enough number of butterfly at the overwintering site in central Mexico. Now, let's discuss about system level measurement results with our proposed uh, M cell. So we tested our full system operation uh, using M cell attached on a live monarch butterfly in a botanical garden for two days. This picture shows the M cells, the node attached on the monarch butterfly and we kept this butterfly in this outdoor cage for two days. And this uh, bottom uh, right picture shows the centimeter scale we use for our reference. And this, the bottom middle of picture shows our gateway. This graph shows to measure the temperature data by uh, M cell in red and also reference sensor in green. So as you can see, the temperature data agrees very well between this the, uh, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So this is the most important part for our localization algorithm because the algorithm only uh, use the temperature reading only for the uh, night time. This is the measured light intensity and also the, uh, the data from the M cell in red and then data from reference sensor in green. And as you can see, the data shows good agreement during this sunrise here and sunset times here. And this is the most critical part for our localization algorithm. The quality of our measurement was evaluated using our target algorithm, which was proposed in 2020. And this algorithm takes light and temperature reading from our uh, M cell and compute likelihood of the coordinate using uh, two neural network. This neural network works uh, are trained by the data from our about 100 volunteers uh, from 2018 to 2020 at 135 different locations uh, using this uh, centimeter scale commercial sensor. This graph shows our localization result from day two. I'm showing only this uh, result from day two because day one has a smaller error. So this plot shows the computed likelihood across latitude and longitude, uh, longitude and each um, the plots, the center is the ground truth. 
And this left uh, figure shows the result only use the light intensity. And then middle one shows the result using only temperature. The last one shows the result using both uh, light intensity and temperature. And we achieved error in tens of kilometers. Maybe it's like, uh, maybe uh, you can think this large, but for our application, this is acceptable. So we observed this the light intensity only uh, alone provides accurate longitude estimation in this direction. And this, and then the temperature significantly refines the latitude estimation, as you can see in this direction. So in conclusion, we propose a new Monaco, track, Monaco migration the tracking system called the MCL with the miniature, the MCL node. We um, demonstrated our full system operation in two-day outdoor experiment using MCL attached on a live Monaco butterfly. Thank you for your attention.